On tonight's edition of Newswatch 18, find out how you, how you can celebrate sustainability on campus. And we'll tell you about what's going on with homecoming and Halloween. The Cyclones played a tough Baylor football team this weekend. I'll have more on that later. And I have some even colder temperatures on the way. I have all the details tonight on Newswatch 18. Good evening and welcome back to Newswatch 18. I'm Desiree Trammell. And I'm Jared Calvert. Thanks for joining us. Today is the last day to apply for Cardinal Court. The crowning of homecoming royalty has been one of Iowa State's many traditions during homecoming week. The Cardinal Court competition started in the early 1970s and has been a tradition ever since. The Cardinal Court is a scholarship program that honors 10 students for academics and community service. The top two students are then named King and Queen. To apply for Cardinal Court, go to www.isusalc.org. Iowa State's Homecoming Week begins on November 3rd and lasts till November 9th. Sparks Middle School in Sparks, Nevada was the scene of a crime yesterday as a student fired gunshots before the start of classes. The 12-year-old shooter injured two of his classmates and killed 8th grade math teacher Michael Lansbury before killing himself. The motive for the shooting has not yet been determined and it is unknown where the shooter got the gun. The two injured students are currently in stable condition. Looking for something fun to do for Halloween? Trick or treat with the Greeks. The Greek community here at Iowa State will host its annual trick or treat night on Tuesday, October 29th from 6 to 8 p.m. in Howe Hall. Everyone is welcome to bring their families for Halloween themed games and of course trick or treating. Costumes are highly encouraged. And parking is available right off Sheldon Avenue in lots 2, 7, and 9. Also in lot 3 off of Bissell Road. Students, start your engines, because this week, Diandra Leslie Pilecki will give a lecture based on her book, The Physics of NASCAR. The lecture, titled The Science of Speed, Faster, Stronger, Safer, is about the role that math and science play in racing. Leslie Pilecki works at West Virginia University as a physics professor and director of the West Virginia Nano Initiative. She has been recognized nationally for her research on nanomaterials, as well as advancing math and science education. The lecture will take place this Thursday in the Sun Room of the Memorial Union. Starting time is at 8 p.m. and it is free and open to the public. The ISU Girls Power Mentoring Program is up and running as Iowa State students act as positive role models and peer mentors for girls at local middle schools. Girls in 6th and 7th grade that go to Ames and Nevada Middle Schools are paired up with female students at ISU as part of the program. The program is currently full of mentors, but it will be hiring again in the spring semester. Anyone interested in applying can look for a post on the student job board and for flyers around campus closer to the start of spring semester. Fans of the NCAA football video game series had a chance to show off their skills on the virtual gridiron Monday as the EA Sports NCAA football challenge made a stop at Iowa State. The challenge is a mobile video game tour that stops at 21 college campuses across the nation. The tour set up, it sets up its tents outside of Parks Library with stations players could compete at. People could play just for fun or as part of the tournament that awarded $1,000 to one lucky winner. If you're a college student, there's a good chance Netflix has helped you procrastinate and at some point or other, and if you're new to Netflix, you've been noticed. Yesterday brought good news for the company as their earnings were shown to have quadrupled in the third quarter. This increase comes as a result of an increase in subscribers in the United States by more than 1.3 million in July to September, bringing the total number of U.S. subscribers to 31.1 million. Netflix is expected to see another increase in U.S. subscribers at the end of the fourth quarter. The Casey Musgraves concert that was scheduled for tomorrow night has been canceled. Those who already bought tickets to the show can get refunds at the location where the tickets were purchased. The concert would have been held at 8 p.m. tomorrow night in Stevens Auditorium. And now we've got Justin here at the desk with us for sports. Justin, how did the Cyclones do this weekend? I'll have all the latest in your Cyclone sports and more. Stay right there. You're watching Newswatch 18. Welcome back. I'm Justin Farmer. 
Iowa State's effort to pull off the upset against number three Texas Longhorns came up short in the volleyball game Saturday night as they lost three sets to one. The Cyclones were able to silence the crowd at Gregory Gymnasium for one set, but it wasn't enough as the Longhorns proved why they are the reigning national champions. The Cyclones got off to a promising start behind the serving of Tori Knuth as they won the first set 25-19. The Cyclones dropped the next three sets though as they couldn't keep up with Texas's high octane attack. The Cyclones look to get back on track when they play number 23 Kansas tomorrow night. The Iowa State football team had a night to forget on Saturday when they traveled to Waco, Texas to face the Baylor Bears. Baylor shredded the Cyclone defense as they racked up a total of 714 yards of total offense and route to a 71-7 victory. The Cyclones struggled on both sides of the ball, especially on the offensive side, as they accumulated a dismal 174 yards of total offense with 57 of that coming on a late scoring drive in the second half. Redshirt freshman Grant Rohach saw his first action as he replaced Richardson in the second quarter as Baylor began to pull away. The loss puts the Cyclones at 1-5 overall and 0-3 in the Big 12. The Cyclones look to bounce back when they take the field this Saturday as they host Oklahoma State. The ISU women's soccer team had a long game with an exciting finish Friday night. With the clock winding down in overtime, senior midfielder Emily Goldstein's goal with 23 seconds remaining lifted the Cyclones to a 1-0 win over the Baylor Bears. This was nothing new for Goldstein, as she had the game-winning goal last week against Oklahoma as well. The Cyclones were deadlocked for most of the game thanks to another big performance by senior goalkeeper Maddie Job. Job stopped all 21 shots faced, leading to her 20th career shutout. The Cyclones look to continue their momentum as they head to TCU next to face off against the Horned Frogs. The Iowa State men's basketball season is just around the corner, and Coach Fred Hoidberg, despite losing four of his top six scores to graduation, will look to repeat the success of last season. The mayor, as he's called, has turned Iowa State into an explosive high-scoring powerhouse as they led the Big 12 in scoring average last year at 79.4 points per game. Although the Cyclones will have many new faces, they will be returning a pair of very talented post players in senior Melvin Edgem and sophomore Georges Niang. Iowa State will look to continue its success at Hilton Coliseum as they went 16-1 last season. It appears that Hilton Magic is back, Cyclone fans, and we have the mayor to thank for that. What's Ames weather looking like this week? Well, after a cool day today, we have even colder temperatures on the way. Of all the details next in your Newswatch 18 forecast. A very cool day out there for today. This will actually be our, well, eventually I'll have graphics behind me here. There, oh, not quite, but anyway. 45 degrees was your high today in Mason City, 43 and 4 Dodge, 45 Sioux City. Our warm spot was Council Bluffs at 48 degrees. Go ahead and look at what's coming up ahead. We do have some freezing conditions and we do have a freeze warning active for portions of Central Iowa. We'll see that in just a couple of minutes. And then right on the other side of uh, basically on Thursday is what we can say. More sun is on the way so we can get rid of all those extra clouds. And then a slight, and I say very slight, warm up as we move into the weekend. Looking outside right now, it's 41 right now in Ankeny, 37 in Des Moines. And we'll jump up just to the north. Pretty much everyone is sitting in the 30s, 37 in Fort Dodge and 39 in Perry here at this hour. Look around at the rest of the state. Like I said, pretty much everyone is in the middle to upper 30s until we head out to the west. 40 in Sioux City, 39 in Council Bluffs right now, and 37 in Mason City here at this hour. Here are those watches and warnings that I showed you before. The freeze warning. There we go, effective until uh, 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, especially for Polk County. And we see that it is Polk County, but not in Story County, so it is literally just to our south. And at le if it doesn't come up our way by the end of tonight, we will probably have freeze warnings here in Ames by the time we hit tomorrow night. The winds have been blowing out of the west-northwest all day long, 9 miles per hour in Mason City, 5 in Sioux City. 7 miles per hour in Fort Dodge, and we have 12 mile an hour winds out of the northwest right now here in Ames at this hour. Clouds and radar over the past six hours. All of our rain and snow showers pushed out and off to the south and east earlier on this afternoon, leaving us with just that layer of clouds, and that's going to stay that way, it looks like, through most of tonight with a very, very slight chance of seeing a pop-up rain shower as well moving through tonight. We'll see that on the future cast. The clouds do start to thin out a little bit by early tomorrow morning, 
but they do thicken back up. A couple of rain showers do try to make it over the Iowa and Nebraska border, but they do skirt just to the west and head over towards Lincoln. Otherwise, we just keep the clouds around moving in through Thursday morning with a possible snow shower up in far northern Iowa, but it looks like we are going to stay dry across much of central Iowa. Look for 29 degrees overnight tonight. Very chilly with winds calming down, starting out out of the northwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Only 44 for your high tomorrow, still well below average, mostly cloudy, and winds out of the west at 5 to 10. Your seven-day forecast, there's our break in the clouds on Thursday, 43 degrees. Much of the same for Friday, but even less clouds. Saturday, as it was hinted at earlier, we do have a home football game against Oklahoma State. And we'll go ahead and take a look at the kickoff forecast at 11 o'clock at Jack Trice Stadium. And like I said, against Oklahoma State, we'll look for 46 degrees with partly cloudy skies. So it's still going to be very cool as we move through uh, into the weekend. But then the rest of the seven-day there's our slight warm up. Like I said, 50 for your high on Sunday, 50, or 50 for Saturday, 53 on Sunday. We do get up about 55 by Monday, but it looks like that's probably going to be about the warmest we are going to see for at least the next uh, 10 days or better. But otherwise, that's all we have for weather. Desiree, back to you. If you love to live green or want to learn how, you can join in the celebration of National Campus Sustainability Day tomorrow afternoon. The Green Umbrella and Live Green are putting on the event to showcase campus organizations, groups, and community businesses that are making a sustainable difference. Bring your bike to the event for a free tune-up and safety check, and then enjoy some cookies and hot chocolate provided by the West Ames Hy-Vee. Bringing your own mug will get you a free fill-up of coffee or hot chocolate. You can also bring food donations. Come to the Free Speech Zone in front of Parks Library tomorrow from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. to celebrate. The event is free and there will even be chances to win sustainable prizes. And that's all we have for tonight's edition of News Watch 18. Make sure to join us next week for more cyclone news, weather and sports. Stay classy Ames.